Okay, welcome to part 9. Um, we're just basically going to carry on pretty much from where we left off. So I'm just going to go back from the database to our system and return to my inbox because we now should have a message that we can test with um, as I showed you in the database in the last part. So what we're going to do now is create a way to show this message on this inbox page. So just going back to the code, we will just switch over to the inbox page and we're going to start from there. So we've already got this list of actions, so what we need to do now is add another sort of box to contain our messages. So we're going to give this one the class of conversations. Oops. Oops again. Okay, there we go. Inside of here, we're going to have PHP loop over all of the conversations and output something that is sort of formatted to sort of work. So obviously we need to create a way to actually get the list of conversations. So we're going to create a new function called fetch conversation summary. But just for sort of, well, for now, I'm just going to call this function up here and then we're going to create it in a moment. So just right at the top, I'm going to create a new variable called conversations. And this is going to be equal to fetch conversation summary. Okay, so that's that done. And then right down here, we're going to use PHP again to loop over using a for each loop each conversation as conversation. And inside of here, we're going to have some HTML. Like that. Except obviously not the HTML tag. That'd be weird. Right. So what we need to do first is create this fetch conversations summary function. So we're going to be doing this obviously in our back end file. So we're going to go to, um, well, our back end file and just create this at the top up here. So I'm going to create a new function. It's called fetch conversations, I think, no conversation, summary. doesn't take any parameters. Um, we're not adding paging to this, by the way, or how you meant to say it. Um, that's just something you can do yourself um, for the sake of keeping it below 20 parts. I just thought this sort of was fine. So what we need to do is create some SQL to fetch all of the message information from the table. So this is going to be quite a complicated query um, because it has to join together three tables, um, sort of using a middle table, if you like, being the user ID and the conversation ID. But anyway, let's not get bogged down in that. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, well, we're going to do create an SQL variable to contain this SQL because it's a pretty big one. So we're going to be using the select type of query. And the things we want to select are the conversation ID, so we can use it in links for deleting the conversation. So we're going to need the conversation ID from the conversations table. So conversations dot conversation conversation ID. Okay. Then we also want the subject from the same table. So conversations conversation subject. And then we want a few other things. Um, one of the things we want is the last reply. So this is going to be the date that the last person has posted in this conversation. And the way we can do that is by using the MySQL max function, which will return the maximum value for a given sort of column, if you like. Um, so we're going to use the max function on the message date column. And this column is in the conversations messages table message date. Okay. I'm going to give this a sort of alias because using this whole string is not very user friendly. So I'm going to use this as the conversation last reply with one Y. Okay, so that's that done. So oops, don't need that there. So I'm going to be selecting these things from the conversations table. Um, and we need to join on the messages table so that we can actually get the messages well so we can get the maximum date so we're going to use a left join uh, or an inner join would also work here uh, but left join will still return rows if there's no messages which isn't really possible with the way we've got it set up but we're using left anyway um, because theoretically it's possible you know to have a message a conversation with no messages so left join we want to join on the conversations messages table. 
So what this means is that we're selecting data from the conversations table and we're linking data from the messages table. Um, and the left here implies to this is the left column and this is the right column sorry left and right table that should have been um, so um, data will still be returned if this has no rows that match up to the ID um, so the next thing we need to do is specify what links these two columns together and that is the conversation ID so in the left table which is the first parameter of the on keyword we specify the left table so conversations conversation ID and this has to be equal to, or in this case it is equal to, the uh, conversations messages with the right number of S's. Is that right? Yeah, oops, that's not anymore. Uh, conversations messages conversation ID. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that, um, we should be able to sort of select our list of messages. Um, however, we obviously don't want the full list for everybody, so we need to use the conversations members table now to make sure that our session, the ID stored in the session, is a member of these conversations. In other words, we're only selecting data, only selecting the list of conversations where the user is a member. So we're just going to add the where part first. So we're going to add where conversations members equals the session user ID okay um, and then obviously we need to join on the members table which we're going to do using an inner join because we want there to be data in both tables that's what inner join means so we're inner joining the conversations members table on the conversations conversation ID so just as above really uh, that's obviously wrong that looks a bit less wrong but obviously instead of members we're going to have messages so actually I'm just going to copy and paste this little bit here and change messages to members with the right, right amount of ease I think that's right okay um, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that we only select data that, or com only select conversations that haven't been marked as deleted. So another another condition we need to check is and the user hasn't deleted the message. So and conversation message, sorry, conversation members, conversation deleted is equal to zero. Uh, I think that's right. No, that's backwards. Okay, there we go. Um, and one other thing we need to do is we need to group the data by the conversation ID. So this is because uh, we're using a max um, keyword here, which acts on a group of rows, and we're also trying to select distinct rows. And MySQL doesn't know what you want to group by automatically. Um, in fact, in this case, they're basically the same. So if you group by the subject, that'd be the same as grouping by the ID because it's a unique row. Um, so what we need to do is just add a group by clause to tell MySQL to only count messages or the max messages that have the same ID. Um, hopefully that's not too confusing, but if you play around with it, you should see what's going on. So we can add a group by clause, and we're going to type to group by the conversations conversation ID. Right, that's that done. And one final thing we need to do is we're going to order these by the date of the last reply. So the date of the last reply is given by this thing here, um, and we've also stored it well as this sort of alias. So we can actually order by this here. So we can just do, well, I think we can, let's try it. <laughs> so let's just do add an order by clause. So we're going to order by the conversation last reply. Uh, I've done that again. Yeah, okay. And we're going to order this descending, so desk. Okay, so you'll be happy to know that, that is our SQL complete, at least for the time being. So now we need to actually run this. So I'm going to set a result equal to MySQL query of the SQL variable. Oops, and then we're going to come down a few lines and we're going to process this down here. So, oops, 
So we're going to create an uh, array of conversations to return. So we're going to call this conversations. We're going to set it equal to a new array. And then we're going to loop over our query result and add data to this array. So we're going to use while row equals mysql fetch a sock. Fairly standard stuff for this bit of the result. Not equals to false. Oops. We're going to append something to the conversations array, which is itself going to be a new array that we're adding. So bring this down, and we're going to be uh, creating the fields, the ID, which is just going to be the row conversation ID. So this is just pretty straightforward. What we're doing is taking the um, sort of awkward long name and shortening it down to ID. Because we already have, we already know this is the conversations array. So conversations, conversation ID doesn't make much sense. We already know that the ID corresponds to the conversation, so just calling it ID is fine, makes more sense. Uh, next thing we want is the subject. So subject, same thing, same thing goes for this. So that's that. I hope. And the final thing is the. Uh, last reply. So last reply. Oh, it's too short. No, it's not. It's got an A in it. Still too short. There we go. Need that up. So this is row uh, conversation last reply. Okay, so that's that done. Final thing is we need to return this array of conversations. Okay. So we should be able to test this out now. Um, so I'm just going to go to my browser. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to my inbox page and make sure we've called it, which we have. And then just for the sake of testing, I'm just going to add a print underscore r of conversations here, just so we can see what the function actually returns. So then we can go back to our browser and hit reload. And you can see that my browser is crashing. So we've obviously ballsed up the SQL. And there you go. So when, we, when you get this error, um, it means that you've usually made a syntax or typo in your SQL query um, because what happens is it causes the MySQL query function so um, this returns false so when you pass in false to this it doesn't make any sense so PHP goes ah and you've done it wrong and then it tells you right so what you need to do is just uh, output this error here however this causes infinite output so what we're going to do, instead of just putting, using echo error, we're actually going to use die to just kill the script and output the error message. OK, so going back to our browser, we'll just hit reload. Um, so, the, no, OK, I've just spelled the table wrong. This should be conversations, obviously. Uh, so table does not exist. So that is not very helpful, actually. So let's just go back to our code. And... Um, I can't see where this is immediately, so, so what we'll do is just control F, conversation, uh, members, there it is, that should be conversations. Okay, so that's that hopefully fixed, so I'll reload this once more. Okay, there's another error, unknown column, conversations, members in where clause. Um, so that's a bit weird. So let's go back to our query. So the where clause is okay. That's obvious. That should be conversations members with the user ID column. That was another pro move on my part. So let's reload for the final time. Another thing, a typo on members. So also in the where clause. Um, so that's here. Members. Reload. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so this is now conversations members in on clause and what have I done wrong here? Oh, members is spelled wrong again. So in the on clause, um, there. Yeah. So let's try it for file time. Hopefully the file time, and we've got no errors, so that's good. So now going back to our code, we can remove this die. Three typos is not bad for such a big SQL query. So reload. And you can see we get this array, which is the message ID, or the conversation ID, the subject, which is testing, which is what I typed in a moment ago, and the last reply, which is a timestamp. 
of hopefully at the time that I added the message. So the final thing we're going to do in this part is just fairly quickly loop over this uh, conversation uh, and just output the list of subjects just for the sake of testing really. So let's go back to, oops. So let's just go back to our code and we will um, sorry our inbox page and we'll output the subject in here. So actually it's not really much point doing this. I'll leave this for the next part and we'll do it a bit more properly. Okay, so come back for part 10 and we will output the list of conversations in a sort of nice formatted way. Okay, good.